Sony's embarrassed malware on the iOS app store and the ultimate airborne attack on your corporate network. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings from beautiful Richmond, California. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for October 7th, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. And hey, thanks to all of you contributing at patreon.com slash threatwire. You make this show possible. Quote, Sony Entertainment CEO Michael Linton remains unhappy with how people comb through leaked emails for embarrassing information, writes CNET on the one-year anniversary of the brutal Sony breach that took place last year. Personal information on 47,000, quote, celebrities, freelancers, current and former Sony employees were leaked on the internet. Hackers even dropped unreleased movies onto the net. And, oh yeah, the corporation's email system and docked were publicly dumped. Talk about being doxxed. Damn. Quote, the part that was distressing was the extent to which people decided to go through it. Sony CEO Linton told CNET he still has people walking up to him at whatever hip lunch spot he's going to and bringing up the contents of emails they read online. Wow, I bet that's seriously charming. Imagine how the Ashley Madison and Office of Personnel Management victims feel. The FBI did trace the Sony attack to North Korea, apparently trying to prevent the release of the interview. And hey... Look, let's be honest, keeping a nation state out of your network is pretty hard, but damn, I've just decided I need to encrypt everything I have on a drive or online, then unplug my machines from the network and burn them with fire and start typing letters again, but not sending them. Yeah, burn them before I send them, because that may be the only way to ensure security. Um, Look, I'm being ridiculous, but I guess I'm trying to say security is hard, and the truth is most of the government and big corporations should be focusing much harder on it. Did I mention the OPM breach? What a mess. Meanwhile, Yi Spectre, so named by Palo Alto Networks, is a strong sign that China is not just an untapped market for consumer goods, but people to exploit with vicious malware. Downloadable from the Apple Store on non-jailbroken iOS devices, Yi Spectre displays full screen ads, after you download an app, eSpectre, uh, basically it claims to be a new version of an old iOS media app called QVOD, which was, quote, popular for its ability to allow users to share pornographic content. I think I got that little tidbit off of CNET. Uh, ads may sound benign, but Palo Alto Network says eSpectre installs and launches arbitrary iOS apps, can replace existing apps with those it downloads, hijacks other apps' execution to display advertisements, change Safari's default search engine, bookmarks, and open pages, and upload device information. Palo Alto adds, quote, it's the first malware we've seen in the wild that abuses private APIs in the iOS system to implement malicious functionalities. Let me say that again. Stuff that had been in the lab was out in the wild on the Chinese iTunes store. So it has been purged from the app store, but Palo Alto notes, quote, moreover, recent research shows that over a hundred apps in the app store have abused private APIs and bypassed Apple's strict code review. End quote, watch out. And I can only hope the U.S. App Store is a little more closely monitored. And by the way, Android, we need to talk. Your App Store is still a vicious, vicious mess. But I will say thank you for making it easier to figure out permissions on apps in the new version of Android. Marshmallow, I just need to wait several years before it's out on my phone. By the way, did you know it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month? Neither did I, though I'm thinking the person that named it was a big William Gibson fan. Look, there's a pretty good page up at DHS.gov, and while I'm about to mock a few things about Cybersecurity Awareness Month. I gotta say DHS's keynote for this week, creating a culture of cybersecurity at work is a pretty damn good idea. Did I mention the thing with Sony and the OPM and the hacking and the vicious breeze and just cruelty that's going online? Um, that said, mostly Cybersecurity Awareness Month means a lot of organizations that don't normally talk about security will talk on the radio about things you should know. Like when the ad pops up in your browser and says, you're infected, click on this link to fix it. You shouldn't click on that link. And hey, you shouldn't open links to your bank or PayPal or anything that involves your credit card or stuff from an e link in an email. It's called phishing, kids. And some of those emails are pretty good fakes. Go to the website and log in instead. I mean, seriously. How long has it been since you've changed your passwords? You don't use the same password on every machine, right? Keep your AV and OS updated to patch the latest flaws? Got all the cool software running to mind your network? Even ran a red team exercise last week? Are you feeling pretty on top of it? Maybe even smug about your security coolness? Good, you're gonna love this next story. In the words of William Gibson, the street finds its own uses for things, which is why I love this title from Wired, Hacking Wireless Printers with Phones on Drones. 
Quote, you might think that working on a secured floor in a 30-story office tower puts you out of reach of Wi-Fi hackers out to steal your confidential documents, but researchers in Singapore have demonstrated how attackers using a drone plus a mobile phone could easily intercept documents sent to a seemingly inaccessible Wi-Fi printer. That's all from Wired. How awesome is that? Go read the article. The link is in the show notes. Do you want to see more Darren? We want to bring you two or three episodes of ThreatWire each and every week, but we need your help to make it happen and free. If you can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash ThreatWire. We may even feature your dur- 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 derpable. No, no one's fur babies are derpable, but these are adorable. You might even see yours in the next episode. And I've, 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 I'm, I'm part of the rebellion here. You got an ugly pet. You got a snake swallowing a rat. I'm going to beg them to put it right here. Darren and Snubs, go for the ugly animals. I dare you. I hope you contribute to help us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. If you can't donate, a like, a share, or a subscribe go a long way, too. You can find all our episodes linked to our social networks and other ways to contribute over at ThreatWire.net. And with that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you out on the internet, assuming I don't burn my computers and just go live in a hole in the woods.